Like, good afternoon, everyone. Now, what I'm going to do in this uh, half an hour, maybe I'll take slightly less than that, uh, valedictory uh, program uh, address, I will try to give you some applications which I have done in the different areas and what are the tools and techniques which I have used. So to start with, I did my, as Suman said, that I did my PhD from University of Kane in time series analysis. And at that time, the Box Jenkins, if you know, remember the ARMA models, they just came out uh, in the book by Box and Jenkins in 1970 and 76. And I started my PhD in 83. So one of the problem was how to identify the armor models or specify. And I worked in that area, used some uh, approximation theory and some non-linear time series modeling. And basically for the next 15 years, I was doing mainly the work in the area of forecasting and the modeling and um, uh, economic and business forecasting. But things keep on changing very fast in statistics. And that's why these refresher courses are needed. And as you can see that these models where actually I did my PhD, 300 page PhD is become obsolete. Nobody uses now the ARMA models. The ARMA models have been replaced by uh, uh, the uh, GARC models, ARC models, SETAR models, and so many new models have come. And also the machine learning techniques have come, which perform much better than the uh, statistical models. So that's why these refresher courses are very important in the sense that you keep on updating your knowledge yourself and you can pass it on to your students. And this knowledge could be helpful to you in doing your own research uh, with the cutting edge technology. Because if you publish a paper in the using the ARMA model, nobody is going to publish that unless you show that uh, how the model has been um, applied, the new uh, models have been applied. So, Taking on the journey further, when I joined the Bond University, I was part of the School of Information Technology. And at that point, the, there were the two groups. One used the statistical models. They think, oh, statistical models are the best uh, for forecasting or modeling or multivariate tendencies or whatever it is. There's another group which used the machine learning, neural network at that time. And later on, the other models came. Now, there was no interaction between the two because the statistics people thought that the neural networks are black box and uh, you just put the data and you get the output and uh, there's nothing in that. Neural network people thought that statistical models are useless in the sense that they need so many assumptions like linearity and the variance covariance matrix should be equal and multivariate normality and all this thing, which will never be satisfied for real data. So there's a gap between the two. So what we tried to do, we tried to bridge the gap and I'll tell you how you can do that and we created some hybrid models. Because these days, the machine learning models are getting more popular as compared to the statistical models. But if you do the hybrid of the two, that is the statistical model and the machine learning, perhaps you can get the much better result. So uh, I'll just try to show you some applications. Now, from the application point of view, I started with the bankruptcy prediction. So we developed the model using the statistical models and the machine learning, how to predict whether the company will be a successful company or it is likely to become bankrupt. Now, the problem came when actually I put some money in Satyam and the Satyam became bankrupt. And on the paper, Satyam company was looking very good. So what was happening? There was a fraud going on in the company itself. So we thought, okay, let's try to detect the fraud. And we tried to develop the model through which we can predict or we can tell if some fraud is going on in a company, say two years before. And our model could have predicted very easily in 2005 that Satyam is doing the fraud. So we did some work on the fraud detection using the similar kind of techniques, the bankruptcy prediction. There's a very good series on the, I think, net uh, Amazon that's a bad boy billionaire. And if you look at that one, you can see uh, how the fraud happens and all these kind of things, where actually as a statistician, you can develop a model through which you can tell. So actually these models could be very helpful, the models which we have developed for the bankruptcy prediction or the fraud detection, using the multivariate techniques, which you have must have done in this refresher course, like the discriminant logistic regression, and the uh, uh, some of the, uh, like uh, some of the machine, I, I'll go through that one, survival analysis, uh, through which you can tell the survival of the company and other things. And these models could be very helpful in day-to-day -day life 
if you are an investor if you want to invest some money in the company obviously you like to invest in a company which is not doing the likely to be successful not doing the fraud it would be helpful to the creditors like the banks a lot of banks they, they they have a lot of problems because they give the money to the people like in the bad boy billionaire niram modi or malia i mean i, I don't want to take all the names and these people uh, the companies become bankrupt it could be helpful to the employers or employees because they, if the company becomes bankrupt then the employees are gone it could be business partner financial markets that suffers regulators it could be helpful to the analysis accounting and audit firm and all this kind of thing so that was one area where i was working the bankruptcy protection and the fraud detection using these statistical models which i'll show you in a moment as well as the machine learning models and we tried to create the hybrid of the two so that we can get better prediction or better classification later on what happened that we started working in the area of breast cancer detection in the sense that in australia all the women who are more than 50 year old they are supposed to undergo the mammography now mammography the radiologist looks at the mammogram and they decide whether the cancer is a benign cancer or malignant cancer and sometimes they do the mistake and the mistake is more serious if the cancer is malignant and the radiologist says it's a benign cancer and the it could the life could be affected in that way the other form of error which is basically if the cancer is uh, benign and the the radiologist says it is a malignant then it's fine the lady will go through the biopsy and then the results will come that's a benign cancer but again there is a problem over there so what we did we took some mammograms of the people who have got the benign cancer and the malignant cancers and then we developed a model through which with 97.5% accuracy we can tell that whether the cancer is a benign cancer or malignant cancer so it is a similar kind of model which i showed you in the uh, which i told you in the in the case of the a uh, bank prediction of fraud detection which is a combination of the statistical models which you have learned and also the uh, the machine learning models later on we use that in the alzheimer detection what's the probability that a person is likely to get an alzheimer disease and also in the uh, various other areas so uh, i won't go through all i think suman has already pointed out the areas where i have worked so without taking any further time i'll just go through the uh some of the powerpoint slide let me see yep okay good okay uh, so yeah. basically i will talk about the applications in brief and then i'll go through some of the ethical issues because this is very important and more quite often the statistician forget now what i will tell you you people write down my email address kkumar@bond.edu.au and if you want to do any research or you need any help or even for the ramarajan college in that center if you want to uh, in future when you run a program i i will be more help, uh, more than happy to cooperate with you and uh, give my services to you people so just write down my email you can always get in touch with me and we can always uh, work out so to start with uh, i am located at the bond university gold coast you can see that's the uh, skyline it's very close to our house just 2 kilometers from there most of the students they spend the time on the beach rather than the university that's a drawback now this slide i got from cr rao and i'm sure all the participants on this course they must be knowing cr rao cr rao is 100 year old we just have a 100 birthday celebration few days back and uh, rather uh, last month or before that and he is one of the top institution of the world right now so what he said about 11 years back that was the slide which he presented in in a conference in sri lanka in 90 sorry 2010 i was there and he said the future or the current trend of the statistical analysis is not what we have done in our bsc or msc classes he said the model free analysis which is given by brayman uh, which is decision tree random forest tree net bootstrap neural network bagging and the boosting biometrics face voice recognition uh, data acquisition representation and storage and then data mining kdd machine learning cross entropy uh, rubinstein and course and the, this kind of thing so he predicted about 10 years back the future of statistics is going to lie in the machine learning and this kind of thing which is actually true these days if you if you don't publish the i mean the, this is the current trend where actually we are uh, going through 
Now he gave a very good example. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, okay. Okay. So he said that the uh, there's a man-machine symbiosis. Why the statistical learning has to be mixed with the machine learning? Computers are becoming indispensable in the knowledge discovery with their ability to process large amount of data gathered from the natural phenomena or generated through experiments by scientists. This speculation with rapidly increasing technology of gathering and processing, computers can take over the function of the scientists in knowledge generation. However, what he Albert Einstein said, computers are incredibly fast, accurate, and stupid. Human beings are incredibly slow, inaccurate, and brilliant. Together, they are powerful beyond imagination. So what you need to do, you need to create a hybrid kind of model where actually you can combine the two, uh, the machine and the man, man and the machine, and you can get the wonderful results. Now, as you 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 people are uh, working on that official program, you know that stations are to be found all over the globe. They are found working in vast array of field. And basically in each, what they say, this is what Tuki said that the best thing being a statistician is that you can play in anyone's backyard. And then the second quote, these days they say, uh, it, it, in God we trust, others please bring the data. So without the data, no hypothesis can be proved. So whether you are working in psychology or human resource or finance or economics, you need the data in order to uh, validate the hypothesis. And you need a statistician. This is what Professor Agwal said. In Bond University, we started a center for data analytics and where actually we provide the consultancy as well as the help to all the researchers from the university, whether you are from the law faculty or humanities or uh, construction or medical school, we, we provide help. So perhaps similar kind of thing could be done in the Ramanujan College. You can have a center for uh, data analytics or similar kind of thing where actually you can provide a statistical clinic to the uh, 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 to the other disciplines where actually the things go on working. Now this is again this it was rated as third best job in the nation. I think in, the things may have changed, and they say that the what is happening right now lot of data is being collected. So they say that there will be big demand of the data analyst, which is basically a statistician is the basic thing in the next five years. There's a two hundred thousand data analysts will be needed and the statistical thinking will be one day as necessary for efficient citizenship as the ability to read and write. Now, as I told you earlier, that the, there is a belief among the students researcher that the subjects like mathematics and statistics do not change over time. However, this is completely wrong as the subjects like changing very fast and that's why these refresher courses are needed. Multivariate analysis have been replaced by modern multivariate analysis, econometrics by modern econometrics, time sensors by modern time series analysis, box Jenkins models developed in the early 70s have been replaced by more sophisticated model like ARC, GARC and so on. So virtually you have to keep on updating your own knowledge and also updating the uh, syllabus for the students so that they keep on uh, same at the same pace as the industry is going or the uh, research is going on. Now, these are some of the application time series modeling and forecasting was the old one, but uh, I've done some application. If I have the time, I mean, maybe in the next refresher course, I'll tell you how you can do that. So it's bankruptcy prediction. You can predict what's the probability that a company is likely to become bankrupt. Fraud detection, what's the probability that a company is committing the fraud. Detection of the money laundering and the shell companies. Breast cancer detection, Alzheimer and the melanoma. And all these models, as I said, they use the similar kind of thing. There's a combination of the machine learning techniques and the, uh, uh, the statistical models. So what you need to do, you need to collect some data of the companies which have become bankrupt and the successful companies, and you can develop these models. And you can apply it to the new company and you can tell what's the probability that this company is likely to be uh, successful or uh, likely to become bankrupt in the future. And obviously, if the company is likely to become bankrupt, you may not like to invest the money, bank will not like to give the loan to it, tax people will like to collect all the taxes before this company becomes bankrupt, and the people like Vijay Malia and Neera Modi, they can't escape unless if we know that they're going to have some problem. So these kind of research could be very helpful in the application in the, in, in the government, or it could be uh, for the companies itself, for the uh, for yourself itself, 
but for the research also is good. I mean, basically we are more interested in the research, but if you want to know any one of these application, I'll be happy to send you the papers. I have published papers in most of these topics and I'll be very happy to share my research with you people. Uh, and you can replicate that in the Indian context. So for example, I've done the bankruptcy prediction for the Australian companies or American companies. You can do it for the Indian companies and you can develop a model for the uh, what's uh, for the SBI or State Bank of India or Reserve Bank of India so that they can tell what's the probability that a company is likely to become bankrupt or some fraud is going on. And also like for the breast cancer, I mean, the, the prototype which we have developed, we want to actually uh, give it along with the Siemens machine that, uh, that does the mammography and what it can do, the radiologists can do, they can look at the probability based on our model and then they can have a look at the uh, uh, mammogram itself. And based on that, they can make a judgment. So they can have a second opinion from the computer. Uh, of course, they can have a look and they can again have a second opinion from the model, which we have developed, and that could be useful to them. Now, as I said that the, this kind of research could be helpful to the various people, investors, creditors, employers, business partners, financial markets, regulators, analysts, accounting and audit firms, and of course, like in the breast cancer, it could be helpful to anyone. Or Alzheimer, where actually the CT scan is not possible, we can still tell what's the probability based on the uh, socioeconomic, demographic, and the other variables, or the family history that a person is likely to get, and the action could be taken in that way. Now, before we go to the more application, I think this is very important, the ethical issues, uh, because a lot of people are misusing the statistics. And that could be a big problem. Uh, as I said, there are three kinds of lie in the world, lies, damn lies, and statistic, which is not true. You cannot lie with the, there's a book called How to Lie with the Statistics by Darren Love. But if you use it sincerely, there's no problem. So graphical representation, of course, I've seen a lot of uh, people misuse. Outlier, obviously you should use the median if there's an outlier in the data, not the mean, because mean could be influenced if there's an outlier in the data. Correlation versus causation, Quite often people calculate the correlation and they relate it with the causation. Actually, it is not true. I'll give you some example in a moment. Sampling is another problem. Random sampling should be there. And then one of the problem you can see in, in the COVID context that the recently French researcher reported hydroxychloroquine, which is the quinine tablets uh, treatment, appeared to reduce the viral load and the amount of SARS-CoV-2 variants in the body but that study was very small, 24 people, and was not randomized as are studies in which people are randomly assigned to get a particular treatment or placebo. So that basically that study which was published in Lancet was completely useless and people started buying Conan, I mean the chloroquine tablets. The America imported 10 million tons and uh, I think Trump threatened the uh, Prime Minister of India that if you don't supply, then we'll do that. But that was useless because it was not a proper study which was done. 40% rise in swine flu death in the 48 hours at two more die. That's a kind of news. So testing should work in the ethical manners and work with reasonable care while collecting, analyzing, and making inference from the data. As a statistician, they should not engage any professional conduct involving misuse of statistical tools for anybody's benefit. For example, people are saying that the hospitals are giving that COVID is negative. Actually, the people are positive because they want to keep the numbers down. I'm not sure what is happening. For example, in sample survey, it is unethical to exclude certain sections of the population so that the results are favorable to meet certain purpose. Obviously, that is wrong because uh, it should be a random sample, not the purpose of sample. Now, this is one example. There is a, you can see, there is a very high correlation with the per capita consumption of the mozzarella cheese and civil engineering doctorates awarded. Obviously, there is no relation, but if you look at the correlation is 96.96 which does not mean that the per capita cheese consumption increased the civil engineering doctorate. Or maybe this one is more important, US crude oil imports from Norway and drivers killed in the collision with the railway train. Correlation is 0.95, but these two things can't be related to each other. Uh, divorce rate in men and the per capita consumption of the margarine, you can see it is 99%, correlation is 0.99. How can be related? You cannot say that per capita consumption, uh, if you increase the per capita consumption of margarine, divorce rate will go up or other way down. There's no relation. What is happening over the period of time, 
per consumption, consumption of margin is going down and also the divorce rate is going down. That's why you're getting a correlation of 0.99, but that does not mean causation. So be careful when you're reading the reports or telling the people, I mean, somebody's telling, you can check whether it is a, uh, a, a correlation or causation. Now, uh, there's a professional ethics, the Royal Statistical Society is also, we, has done the ethical uh, consideration. We have got certain values. But before we come, this is very important for the uh, young statisticians and the young researchers and the people who have attended this program. So Leo Bremen, he has the two culture. He said that uh, if you are interested in prediction, uh, where the to be able to predict what the response are going to be based on the future. And the other part is information. You want to see how the variables are influencing this one. So these two are different things. One, one is you're interested in the prediction and the other is like how many corona cases will be there or when the corona cases will go down or when it will flat out. The other is what is causing the corona, right? So these are the two uh, prediction and the information. So these are the two cultures in the use of modeling to reach conclusion from the data. One assumes that the data are generated by a model and the other uses algorithmic model and treats the data mechanism as unknown. Now, what they say that in the first case, response variable is a function of the different predictor variables, random noise and parameters, and the parameters are estimated from the data and the model then used for the information. In the other case, algorithmic model uh, culture, we develop the algorithm and is find the function fx and that algorithm operate on x to predict the response y. So what we have done, we tried to combine the two. And this is what I will suggest that you people should do. So you must have done in this refresher course or in your master's program or something, uh, the models like regression models, binomial and multinomial logistic regression models, discriminances, both binomial and the multinomial, cluster analysis, principal component factor analysis. I've used all these techniques in my research, I've used uh, including the latest one. And then I've also used the machine learning. Machine learning techniques could be like neural network or deep neural network, decision tree, like the Leo Bremen's, uh, which process CR Rao pointed out, random forest and dead, stochastic gradient boosting, support vector machines and Gaussian process clarifier. What you can do, rather than using only the statistical model or the machine learning, you can combine the two, you can develop a hybrid. And that hybrid model actually gives much, much better prediction as compared to only statistical models or machine learning models. Now, as I said that whenever you're doing a study like where you need the classification like the breast cancer detection or bankruptcy prediction or fraud detection or anything like that, make sure you have the type one and type two error. You should take it very carefully because type one error like in the case of breast cancer is very, very serious in the sense that if a benign cancer is classified as malignant, that's much serious as compared to if a malignant cancer is classified as the, uh, 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 sorry, the if a malignant cancer is classified as a benign, it's much more serious as compared to if a benign cancer is uh, classified as the malignant. So make sure you get, look at the type one and type two error and try to reduce the the type one error, which is more serious, where actually the we, the you classify the cancer as the benign when actually it is malignant or you classify a company as the uh, 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 as a good company where actually the company is likely to become bankrupt because what will happen, you'll put all the money in that company and the company will become bankrupt. So that is a type one error, which you should try to reduce. Type two error is you classify a company that's going to be a successful company, but actually, sorry, is going to be a bankrupt company, but actually it is a successful company. That is also a mistype error, but that is not that serious. You won't put the money in that one. Only thing is you lose the opportunity cost, but that won't be very serious. So misclassification costs are very important and you always break the data in the testing and training. So you, the testing data, you try to develop the model and then you look at the training data, sorry, training data, you develop the model and then you test it on the uh, rest of the data, which you have kept as the, uh, for the uh, testing purpose. One of the problem which I have seen is the class imbalance problem. For example, if you look at the, you test 1000 people for the COVID, you see that only 10 or 20 will have the positive result. And you can't develop a model with 20 people having COVID and 980 having um, uh, no symptoms or no COVID. So what that's called the class imbalance problem. And there are 
ways now, like SMOT and the few other techniques have now, I can send you the details, R code and all those kind of things, where actually you can generate more data for those ones. There is what's called synthetic data. So where actually the data is not available, you can develop or you can generate more data and then you can develop your model based on the, uh, looking at the, uh, where actually the, 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 the things have happened or the uh, casualty has happened as compared to where the casualty has not happened. And also cut off value you have to change because sometimes quite often people take 0.5, but actually if you change the cut off value, we can get better result for the type one and type two error. But again, it's a bit difficult to explain in a short time, but uh, I can always help you. Now, what I said in the beginning that you must have done statistical models and machine learning models because when I went through the uh, uh, topics which you have covered in the refresher course, I was very impressed. You've done all the cutting edge topics which you have done. I don't know how much machine learning you have covered, but uh, uh, this is the future of the statistics as Professor C.R. Rao pointed out. And what you can do, you can combine the two. So there's a combination of the multiple models often perform better than the individual models on their own. For example, when you're doing a classification, you can use the logistic equation, you can use discriminances, you can use neural network, you can use decision tree, random forest or tree net. Every, all the models will give you the probability of success and failure. Now, if the company is very good, all the models will give you the probability of success as 0.9, uh, the, of course, different probabilities will come because they use different algorithm. And if the company is bad, it will be uh, the probability will be 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 or whatever it is. But sometimes the probability could be 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 and something like that, where actually it's a bit difficult to dis I mean, they discriminate between the two. So what you can do, you can generate the hybrid model and how to develop the hybrid model. You can... Uh, you can use a hybrid technique like the logistic regression and discriminances and the neural network. So in the neural network itself, you can put as a probability of success which you get or whatever probabilities you get as one of the input and you can see suddenly the performance of the neural network will be much better. Also, you can use the, uh, uh, so basically we found that the hybrid model, they perform better as compared to the statistical models and artificial neural network. Now there's another way, which is actually given in the paper by Matt Dakis. He said, suggested what, that first of all, you use all the models. So there are different models, you can use the different models. And then you can find out the average of these probabilities because some models have their drawbacks. The, uh, the second method was, the first method is taking the averaging the predicted probabilities across the models included in the hybrid model. And the second method is voting mechanism. So if the out of six methods, four are saying that the cancer is a or a malignant cancer, then you can say it's malignant, or you can take the average of all the probabilities, or if the four models are saying that the company is likely to be successful, you can take that. The class with the most votes across all the models were then considered the, the prediction for the hybrid model. This means that an odd number of individual models were required for the second type of hybrid model to avoid tried votes. And then some people have used the two stage hybrid model. So they use the statistical model first, and then they use the machine learning for the cases which are misclassified. And then they weed out the, uh, uh, they increase the classification rate. So basically we use this in the fraud. We use the different techniques like the discriminancy, logistic regression, neural network, decision trees, and the other ensembles. And uh, like in the case of the breast cancer, you get the mammogram, you extract the images, then you use these statistical classifiers and use the models like the statistical model, like logistic regression, regression uh, discriminances, and we use the neural network and we combine the two. And based on that, we can tell whether the cancer is a benign cancer or is a malignant cancer. Anyway, I, I can't give the results. Uh, so hybrid artificial intelligence model can be useful in the fraud risk assessment. Uh, in the case of fraud, we can also use in predicting forecasting detection and prediction of various types of stages of Alzheimer's disease. That is the latest research we are doing based on the ADNI database. They have classified the individuals in the four or five stages. So we can tell what's the probability that a person is likely to progress from first stage to the second, and, and what's the probability that a normal person is likely to get the Parkinson disease or Alzheimer's disease. Detection of the money laundering and shell company, that's another student is doing. 
that's another big problem in India. And again, if you look at the series Bad Boy Billionaire, you can see how the money laundering was done or how they, they created the shell companies. And you can use statistical tools to detect that, so whether the company is a genuine company or is a shell company. Okay, uh, to the companies which been bankrupt while we're managing them. Okay. Questions, I'm not sure whether we have the time for the question. 